predicated that you don't create bigger gaps. Yes. Or you go on a holiday for a month and don't train. Yeah. Now you got a big gap. Yeah. So you can say, well, I'm on holiday. You can still do those types of workouts somehow. You know, you could do bike workouts. Mm. You know, I can't find a track. Or here's a hill or a pool or... Yeah, stay It's like we were talking about plan B. Like, yeah, doing not doing it, you're de Yeah, for sure. So I think the, the first step is identify the essential training menu items. So there's five types of workouts. Uh, maybe there's a couple of key weightlifting exercises that support that. Yeah. Maybe there's a plyometric workout like we did today, that once a week. So you simplify, you, you identify the essentials. You let go of the nice to know stuff. Yeah. And the esoteric ah, stuff. Yeah. And you come up with a rotation that can expand or contract depending on your sure. schedule. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's really interesting. No, that's so I had a girl, she's two of one half miler and in the middle of residency school she ran two oh two. And she was training about three days a week. Yeah. But training training what she needed yeah. to train. So she had about seven key workouts. So we just do one, two, three. That's all we can get done this week. Next week, four, five, six. Third week, number seven. I'm back to one. Yeah. And then, uh, so her rotation, she was uh, 72 hours on, 72 hours off. Yeah. And so on the on, she was doing dribbles in the hallway and stuff. Mm. Like yeah. she found a way to tick boxes. For sure. Mm. No, I definitely try to, obviously, like, I feel like that, what you told us today, some of those drills, definitely be, yeah, it's good to chuck them in, like, small little, but do you, what's your opinion on how long little sessions here and there can be, because I know there's a lot of studies saying anything less than 10 minutes isn't really doing anything for you. Like, so doing, like, just literally, like, five, three minutes of those over the feet, or over the ankle drills, whatever. Yeah, like... A lot of those studies are looking at energy substrates <clears throat> or big ticket items yeah. in, in the waste product like prostaglandin, catecholamine, mm. stuff like that. They're not looking at neuroendocrine response. Yeah. Well, in 400 meter running, neuroendocrine response may have more value that's true. than energy yeah, system. That's very, very true. Because speed reserve is everything. Yeah. And if you want to improve your speed and your essential speed reserve, mm. the neuroendocrine, neuroendocrine has way more power than anaerobics yeah. or like the, glycolysis yeah. factors. The endocrine system is certainly one that's forgotten a little bit when it comes to... And we don't know neurochemistry, like how does epinephrine or epinephrine, acetylcholine, serotonin, dopamine, yeah. how do they dance? at different velocities, yeah. at different forces, and what is their recovery window? And research that we're doing right now is called refractory period. So like in cardiovascular after, you know, a heart episode yeah, yeah. or whatever, there's a refractory period yeah. where things reorganize. You've got just to get back down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the same thing happens in biochemistry. So the same, well, if you don't train for two or three weeks, you're going to lose it. Mm -hmm questionable first of all <laughs> but second of all what is the refractory period and what are the interventions to return back to your to existing that so period. like yeah. I had a guy pole vaulter Brad Walker he's American record holder 604 got burnt out retired for a year came back to see Olympic here I want to go one more time but I don't want to train like I used to I'm burnt out great we'll weight lift once a week we'll pole vault once a week that's it yeah I like that. Third workout in the gym. He power clean 150k. Hadn't lifted in a year. Yeah. So his refractory curve on power expression is really steep. He just needed three touch up workouts yeah. and he was there. Now the literature says you take a year off weightlifting, it's going to take you a year to get back. Yeah. It's bullshit. You got 8,000 case studies. That's the kind of thing where everything's so individual. So. Like I'm sure the majority Gen of genetics, previous yeah. training history, like you, 
In Australia, you put a lot of anaerobic threshold capacity workouts in the bank. So a couple touch-up workouts in your back, but where you're short is acceleration speed and a lap. Yeah. So if you miss those, yeah, it's going to take you longer on the refractory curve because you don't have a history. Ah. Yeah. 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 Yeah.